Oh, oh, it's recording. Oh, it's recording. I didn't realize it was recording. I was trying to hack into a cloud for a bug bounty program. So hopefully I get that bounty. Now, if you are here, you probably want to know how you can also hack into a cloud. And this is probably the video what you want to know for what are some of the low hanging fruits for getting into a cloud application. Now, this entire video is going to focus on two methodologies There are a lot more, but two of my favorite ones are going to be talked about in this video. First one being attack miter, which is a well known resource for you to identify what are some of the common paths taken by hackers to enter into an application on a cloud or in an enterprise and how do you go about kind of figuring your way out and exploiting it? The second resource I'm going to talk about is OWASP Top 10. And these guys are basically a free organization that talks about what are some of the most common vulnerabilities on application across the world. That's OWASP Top 10. Also a disclaimer, there were no cloud service provider hacked while making this video. And also, if you are trying this, please do not use this in production or do not use this for exploiting or abusing a business. Please use this methodology responsibly because you don't want to end up in, I guess, in a bad situation for whatever reason. Now, the first framework I'm going to talk about is Attack Miter. As I mentioned, Attack Miter is a very well known resource for people to understand how do hackers exploit a application on any cloud provider. Now, there are total five methodologies that have been described in Attack Miter for a cloud environment. The first one being drive by compromise. Drive by compromise basically means you have had access to an application which is probably already exploitable. There has been, I don't know, a version of PHP which is in there for a long time and you've identified a vulnerability that was there in 2018 or 2019 but has not been resolved by this one particular application that you're bug bounty researching for or just doing research on. No, God, please, no! And you can responsibly disclose the vulnerability to the application owner, but what you can also do is as you identify why is this a problem? Because if the application is hosted on a cloud, you potentially could have access to the resource in the cloud where the application is being hosted. And because most applications are hosted on cloud these days, it is probably one of the most common ways to identify a way to get into a cloud. Now, the second one is exploiting public facing application. Exploiting public facing application is very common in cloud. Basically, most of the news you've been hearing about cloud breaches, they have been primarily focused on the fact that way there was a storage from AWS S3 out on the internet. There was blob storage out on the internet. There was basically any form of storage which is online and on the internet without a username password is basically a great way to identify whether the resource is hosted in cloud and maybe even a way for you to go to the next level of accessing the cloud resources that are there attached to the storage as well. So that's one more common way. Now the third common way according to attack monitor is phishing. Basically you send an email with an exploit or a a link to an exploit which by clicking on that link the individual that has received the email is basically going to lose control of their and you would access to the computer without them knowing it. And if they also happen to have access to the cloud on that laptop or server, you basically get access to the cloud as well. So that's the third common way to get access to cloud. Now, fourth common way to get access to your cloud is basically trusted relationship. If you're watching this video, this video was made a couple of months after the Okta incident. Okta is a very popular identity and access provider. And they had an incident where one of the third parties they used to work with, which is a customer service, basically, answering phone calls for if anyone needs support, they were compromised and the hacker was able to get access to Okta through the third party customer service department. So you can imagine third parties are a very common thing for a business to work with. And if you can identify a third party that has access to the cloud or is managing the cloud or an MSSP, managed service provider, those guys are those guys and girls in businesses. They have access to the cloud environment of many of their businesses or customers if you get access to one of them, you probably can access a lot of the cloud accounts that they would have access to. Now, the final one is basically having a valid account. Valid account basically means that you have a genuine credential, which you have either acquired from phishing or basically you were just nice to Ashish and Ashish just gave you the username password for their cloud. Or I just happened to be leaving my username password on GitHub or a popular repository somewhere and you got access to that. So if that was the case, uh, that would be one more way for you to access the cloud account. Before I get into the OWASP top if you are someone who is probably working in the cloud and probably listening to this in a way because you want to protect the application that you're hosting, you're probably from the blue team, defenders. I'm all for you guys and girls. 
But for you to be able to protect, you probably need the right kind of tools to help you have some visibility. If you are one of those people, and you may be interested in this video sponsor, Lightspin. Lightspin is an agentless, context-driven cloud security posture manager or CSPM. In 2022, if you are trying to protect your cloud environment or understand the posture of it, you probably need two things prioritization and the attack path. Once you have the attack path defined, you probably want some context for how do you prioritize something like this. And if you are looking for a cloud security posture manager tool like that, you definitely should consider Lightspin for it. And you can check out Lightspin on lightspin.io slash Ashish for more information. I'll leave this in description in the comment as well. Thank you for Lightspin for sponsoring this video. Definitely check them out if you are someone who's from the defendant team. Now let's get back to the second framework, OWASP top 10. Now I'm not gonna repeat everything that was a replica from the attack miter because even though there's only 10 attack paths that you can think of from a cloud perspective from OWASP, but a lot of them overlap. Like for example, the public facing one from the attack miter has at least three or four, for example, cryptographic failure, security misconfiguration, software and data integrity failure are very much related to exploiting public facing application that we spoke about in attack miter. And there's another one, vulnerable and outdated component is very similar to drive by compromise from attack miter. So I'm not gonna talk about any of these. I'm gonna focus on SSRF or server side request forgery, which is a very common way for you to have access to cloud environment if you are able to get into an application. Now, even though I say it's common, it's common if you are using AWS V1 CLI or version one of the CLI, or you are using an application which is prone to server side request forgery. Those are the only two scenarios where you'll find that SSRF is helpful, but because the version one of AWS is still very common, you should just be able to search AWS CLI V1 exploit and you would find plenty of exploits that you could use and how SSRF and version one of AWS is quite relatable, very common. So definitely check that out. Now, the next one that I'll talk about is broken access control as well as identity failure. Now the identity failure as well as the broken access control are similar from a perspective of it's about having control on the user. If you are able to get access to a user, as I said, if you would have asked me nicely, I would have given you my username and password. So, or I've left it in GitHub or any of the popular repository. That is also very common from what I was talking about in the attack miter where we spoke about a valid account. So I'm not going to talk about that as well. But one more thing I'm going to talk about in this video, which is very relevant and not covered in the attack miter is insecure design. Now, insecure Secure design, you may think, hey, Ashish, that sounds very similar to if I, ha I have not put my storage in, in the, on the internet, uh, this would be insecure design. Now, yes, you're partially true. However, the bigger part of this thing is if you have a application that is also around 25, 30, hundreds of other applications, now compromising one application also means that you've compromised all the other ones in the same network because as any hacker would do, once you get access to a box in an environment, you basically spray and find out what other servers are in that same network that you can exploit. Now, if you have a very open policy between them, which is quote unquote insecure design of the architecture of that application, you'll have that door wide open for everyone to basically exploit every application and not limit the blast radius at all. Blast radius in this context is basically if someone was to exploit or take control over one application, they should not have access to all the other applications that you're hosting in cloud. So limit limiting the blast radius of that explosion that would be created by cause of it. Now, that's pretty much what I wanted to cover, but if you are someone who probably wants to know more information about what are some of the common vulnerabilities, you can always check out the security bulletin from your cloud service provider, or you can always look up the research team that some of the security vendors have. I'm happy to give a list and make a whole video on the common vulnerabilities that have been found in AWS, Azure, Google Cloud, probably individual videos for them. If you want something like that, please feel free to drop that as a comment. But if you like videos like this about cloud security and everything around cloud security, make sure you subscribe and hit the bell icon so that you get notified when we release the next cloud security video. I will see you in the next video or I'll talk to you in the comments. I'll see you. Peace.